All right. I think we are live. I think we are good to go here. Um, the summer reading coordinators, they use a bit of a different setup than I do, so hence some looks of confusion. Also, potential looks of confusion. I am not Cameron, nor am I Tate. I am Laura, and I am your guest host for this week's trivia. And this week's trivia is all about nature. Very cool stuff. So we will get started in a few minutes here. I just got to make sure that I have got everything set up correctly. And I also want to make sure that I can see all of your comments. Um... Let me see. Ah! Okay. I clicked on something, but everything seems to still be okay. All right, so we've got, okay, we've got some people watching now, which is good. I can't totally see where your comments are. Oh, oh, perfect. All right. Now I see it. All right, so when you arrive here, if you would like to put your name in the comment section associated with this video, I will put you on the wheel right now. Oh, here we got Cordelia and Wesley. Hello to you two. All right, your names are going right on the list. Perfect. Oh, and we've got Colin and James, as well as Ellen. Splendid. Okay. And of course, if you don't give me your name right at the beginning of the trivia, that's a okay. I will be asking for everybody's name at the end of the trivia again, just to make sure that nobody is left out. Because we don't want to have that happen. Not in the slightest. Especially when there's a $5 gift card on the line. Am I right? Yes. I am right. Okay. So yes, as you are well aware, I am not Tate, and I am not Cameron. I am Laura, and I'm here filling in for our wonderful coordinators today. Now, they did all of the wonderful trivia. I am just presenting it to you in a fun and funky way. <laughs> I'm excited to see what's going on. I'm a big fan of all things nature. Now, I know it's pretty customary for them to ask what your favorite thing is because I too like to ask people what their favorite thing is. So if we're going with nature, let's up the ante here. Give me your favorite animal and your favorite plant. Or you can do one or the other. You can do both. And I'm going to ask you guys again at the end of the trivia just to see how we feeling. All right. So we have got a few of us here, why don't we get started with the fun trivia? All right. Oh, look. <laughs> What's your favorite animal? So, elephants and meerkats. I believe that is Tate. This, she is saying that she loves elephants and meerkats. I mean, I love them as well. I got to um, help feed meerkats at the Toronto Zoo once. They are so playful and they are so cute. And I feel like elephants are just so intelligent. I would love to be one of their friends. Oh, hold on here. Ooh, horse and flowers. That's what Ellen says. I like that. Um, my favorite animal, I love a lot of animals, but I'm very close to lemurs. They're very, very cool beans. They're very soft. If you have the opportunity to be near one, and they have very, very smooth hands, like they've been using um, tons and tons of hand cream. <laughs> love it. All right. So, um, so take part in this week's kids trivia and you will have a chance to win a $5 Tim Hortons gift card. So all of you players, you're all going to be put into a draw when the game is over. So make sure to comment your name either now or later. I will do a double check and then we will see who our lucky winner is. Okay. We also have, so James likes the lion and the strawberry plant and Colin likes a dog and mum's hibiscus, specifically mum's hibiscus. I mean, everybody's plants are different, so I like that. And Cordelia likes giraffe and flowers, and Wesley likes sharks and pumpkins. Ooh, love that. I'm loving that. I mean, it's getting close to, it's August now. It's getting close to the fall season. <laughs> I know some people would curse me for saying that, but I love fall. All right, here's our first question. How can you tell how old a tree is? Now, when I think of how old a tree is, I, I, this is not giving away the answer, I promise. Um, I like to think of stumps, tree stumps. I said something about those stumps. 
that might make things a little bit easier to figure out the age of a tree. You get out like a measuring tape. Um, do you put rulers up against the tree? Is that how it goes? All right, you got answer here of how many rings are in the trunk. Another answer of uh, how big the trunk is and rings in the middle of the trunk. All right, I think everybody, you're pretty well on the same page here. And you're right, you count the number of the rings in its trunk. So some of, them, some of the lines are really glued together and some of them are farther apart, but the number of them indicates how old um, the, the tree is. And trees, as they get older, they get like the trees get thicker obviously as they're adding layers and layers of wood every year so then that that is what those lines are because at one point that line was the outside of the tree pretty crazy and hence why i think of stumps because when you have a stump then you have that cross section of the tree and you can see all the little lines on the inside all right question number two where do plants get their food from so how do they eat? Not in a way that animals eat. It's different. They're very special. There's a little bit of a clue here with the pictures of the plants that we are showing here, where the focus is of the plant. Speaking of food, though, I can see little strawberries at the bottom of that strawberry plant picture, and now I'm hungry. Strawberries are great. And didn't you say one of you loved... Stra strawberry plants, it, it was James. Strawberries are great, am I right? So good. Sometimes it's fun to see little wild strawberry plants. Sometimes they'll grow on people's lawns and they're teeny tiny little strawberries. All right, got some answers here of rain, soil and rain, water, dirt, and sun, sun and dirt. You know, those are all pretty much the right answers. Cause the, but the correct answer is the sun because specifically the leaves are soaking up the sunlight because the sunlight, when it enters the leaf, there's a process called photosynthesis that converts the sun's light into food. Um, and then, the, yeah, then they, that's how they get their oxygen and nutrients and, well, it, excuse me. Um, so that's how they get their energy, but their nutrients come from water and carbon dioxide. So, wait. yes, because they do obviously need water to, to survive, as a lot of you were saying, because you think, oh, make sure you water the plants. And also, of course, they need soil to be rooted in something. They can also get their nutrients from the soil as well. So I'd say this is kind of a three-pronged question. So it does indeed get its energy from the sun. Um, that's how it processes the, um, the light rays of photosynthesis, but it also does require water to help make this process happen. All right, moving on to number three. What is the largest animal on earth i think there's a bit of a hint here with these pictures big wide open spanses of water so might be that the largest animal on earth maybe they live in a tropical place or maybe they live under water not sure The size of this animal, if it's the animal that I think it is, is absolutely insane. Like, it's like, I don't want to say what, I don't want to compare it to something because I don't want to give away potentially what the answer would be. But there is a particular vehicle that it is bigger than and it is terrifying. The size, the size is terrifying. The animal themselves, not that terrifying. We got an answer here of a whale shark. I love whale sharks, so I 100%, 100% support this answer. Whale sharks are my favorite kind of sharks. Funnily enough, I'm wearing a bracelet today that is from a company that helps take plastic out of the ocean. And this orange bracelet right here is for whale sharks. Got whale sharks and manatees. Well, this is the Everglades, but manatees live in the Everglades down in Florida. All right. All right, let's take a peek, shall we, at what our answer is. It's the blue whale! The blue whale can weigh up to 400,000 pounds. Like, that's just crazy. And they are the size of, like, a school bus. So, like, that's just not, like, a tiny little smart car. That is a school bus. That is absolutely colossal. We have some pictures here of some blue whales. I'm pretty sure they sleep, like, upside down, and then a way, like, their, their faces are pointing towards the bottom, and then they're, like, sort of like an upside-down bottle. Weird. They're so incredible. All right, question number four. 
what kind of tree grows from acorns? And a little bit of a fun fact here, we have an acorn tree outside the library that produces very small, sweet little acorns, but there are also ones that are, produce larger acorns as well. So, very exciting stuff. Actually, I walked by a tree the other day that had beautifully large acorns, and I, I was pointing those out, and I was like, oh, look at them, they're so cute. I also, you know, the cuteness is the fact that they all come with their own little hats, which I think is just spectacular. They're built in with their own little hats. All right, so we've got a lot of answers of oak tree here. Splendid, you guys are right on the ball because they are oak trees. And oak trees can reach around 148 feet tall and can live up to a thousand years. That's crazy, a thousand years. Now, the one that is downstairs is definitely, like downstairs outside the library, it's definitely not a thousand years old, but maybe it'll get there. And yeah, the ones in the middle there, um, I don't know if the ones were that big, the ones that I saw in town here, because those ones are look a little bit longer, but goodness gracious, they were just beautiful, beautiful acorns. All right, question five. Oh, I love the little, the cute little uh, chipmunk emoji with the little acorn. Mm. All right, how many colors are in a rainbow? We've got some lovely examples of rainbows here. For some reason, looking at a rainbow always makes me think of the Magic School Bus episode that was about um, rainbows and prisms and that sort of thing. So I have a lovely m mental image right now of Liz, the lizard. I think he's actually a chameleon, even though I thought he was an iguana. I think he's a chameleon. And he had a, like a raincoat on, which is the most fabulous thing. A lizard in a raincoat, it does not get better than that, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so I have a guess here of eight colors. I mean, you could kind of zoom in with your eyes and try to figure out what it is, but... The gradation is very gradual and complete, so it's hard to see what some of those individual colors are. Let's take a peek, shall we? There are seven colors. So in the rainbow, from top to bottom, it's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, which is sort of like darker blue, verging on the purple, and violet. And rainbows are formed when light bends and reflects through water. You may have also seen this happen if you're directing light through like a prism, like a, plast or a plastic or a glass um, prism. I, I believe people are going to, uh, rock fans are going to hate me. I think it's rock. There is a fairly famous um, album cover right there that has a prism on it that shows light entering the prism and then dividing into the colors as it leaves the prism. Awesome stuff. So why does it all, why is there called rainbow? Well, they usually occur in the sky after it rains because there's sun somewhere, but yet it's still raining uh, nearby. So then the sun's light is going through the water droplets and making a rainbow. Beautiful. All right, moving on to question six. What is the largest body of water on earth? Some of you have may even swam in it at one point in time. I wouldn't be surprised. What is the largest body of water on Earth? It's got to be large if it's going to be holding things such as great blue whales. And I mean whale sharks too. Whale sharks are huge. They are a very gentle type of shark. Um, they, they're mostly filter feeders. So they travel around in the water like this. It's like, ah, and then just the fish just come in. So when you think of a shark, they're not as like, rawr, they're more just like, I'm chill, man, I'm just here to have a good time. And they're also so cute when they have all these spots on their back. Adorable. All right, so you have Atlantic Ocean as a guess, Pacific Ocean, ocean in general. My personal idea of this question might be a different answer than what our coordinators have lined up here because technically there's kind of two answers. All right, so the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean. Um, it is the largest body of water in the world, taking up 50.1% of water on Earth, which is crazy. Also, geographically, which is kind of interesting, which you can see in the picture down here um, below, you can see there's the coastal line there. So you can see it's like the coast of Australia going up through Asia, 
Japan, then coming down on the other side, we're going through like uh, BC, well, Alaska, BC, then down through like California. That is called the Ring of Fire because there are a lot of um, tectonic plates that are bumping up against each other in this area. And tectonic plates, when they're really pushed up against each other, sometimes that can cause volcanoes. Hence, the Ring of Fire. And when I was saying earlier how my answer might differ a little bit from the Pacific Ocean is technically all the oceans together are called the World Ocean. So my answer, technically, eh, I wanted to say the World Ocean, but the Pacific Ocean is 100% correct. Good for y'all. Look as you go. All right, question seven. What is the tallest animal in the world? So you might have a bit of a hint here. It looks like it might be in a place potentially nearer to the equator than us. It looks very nice, nice place to have a holiday. Also looks like we might have a little savanna situation going down there in the, the bottom corner with some beautiful trees. Not a rainy or a stormy day, but one of those just beautiful, probably hot days out on the savanna. So what is the tallest animal in the world? Think about all those tall animals out there, whether they're ones that are tall standing on all of their feet or standing up. Because you can think of like a bear. When Bears aren't, I mean, they're tall, but then when they stand on their back feet, they're like tall, tall. <laughs> all right, we've got a lot of guesses here of giraffe. Let us see. And you're right, the giraffes. They are the tallest animals in the world, an average height of 16 feet. Holy smokes. So giraffes spend most of their time uh, most of their life standing up and they can even sleep standing up. It's weird, but I'm pretty sure I've seen it at a zoo once. These creatures are so incredible. They also have um, the, the mechanic, biological mechanics in their neck allow them to bend over to drink water and then stand up without, you know, having a rush of blood to the head. There's just so much goodness that is working in there to help them perform at their best when they have such a long neck to contend with. All right, question number eight. What is the most common insect? Hmm. So we're looking here at some clues here. We have some trees. Looks like a nice little forest path or a forest road, rather. And oh, is someone holding up a clump of dirt? I'm not really sure. Could be dirt, sand, potentially um, wood that has been heavily chewed and put into like a mulch type situation. So what is the most common insect? So the, I, I'm assuming this isn't by weight because sometimes, uh, sometimes you might have a whole ton of one insect, but then the total mass of that creature isn't as much as another. But I think here we're looking at in numbers, the most common insects. So we've got a guess here of ants, housefly, Ant or worm, love worms. They do so much for us and they don't even realize it. Not houseflies though, but goodness gracious, are they ever all over the place. As soon as you open up your car, housefly. As soon as you go into your house, housefly. And it's just a little bit crazy. All right, let's see what the answer is here. It is ants. Ants are the most common insects in the world. There are more than 10,000 species. Though not just 10,000 individuals, 10,000 species. Um, they're very strong. They can lift 20 times their own body weight. I always think of the movie um, Bugs Life from Pixar, which I was obsessed when I was with when I was a child. I had a flick backpack. It was amazing. Couldn't fit much into it, though, because, I mean, he's very, like, he doesn't have a lot going on. He is very skinny because he is an ant. It's just so amazing. They're really incredible creatures. Like, if we could harness some of that power. Incredible. All right, question nine. What animal has the longest lifespan? I don't even know if I know the answer to this one. And it looks like our clues here, they're putting us either in the Arctic or the Antarctic. Um, looks like glaciers are breaking off in the one picture to be uh, icebergs. In the bottom there though, we have some land. So if it's land, it depends because Ant Antarctica is mostly a, is land based for the most part, surrounded by water. Whereas um, the North Pole, there is land surrounding the North Pole, but actually the North Pole itself is just ice, 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 ice with water underneath it. So honestly, that picture could probably be from either really far north, uh, potentially in a more mountainous region, uh, maybe near Russia. 
or it could be in the Antarctic. All right, we've got the immortal jellyfish, which I just think is amazing. Are jellyfish immortal? Jellyfish themselves are amazing, so that is what's pretty great. We've got a walrus, polar bear. See, my first guess would have been polar bear, too, after seeing this. So let's see. Actually, I have a different answer in my mind. I will tell you what it is, but I don't think it's right. Oh, it's the Arctic whale. I didn't know that. You guys didn't know that? So they have the longest lifespan. Oh my gosh, they can live more than 200 years. I was going to say, I was going to say a turtle or a tortoise, because some tortoises can really get up there in years, even alligators. But I was checking to see if it was animal or mammal, because if it was a mammal, then for sure that ixnays are uh, reptilian friends. But that's so cool, the Arctic whale. Huh. All right, question 10. What is the fastest animal on Earth? The answer to this is also going to be your Beanstack code to enter in on Beanstack to unlock the badge for this activity. So you can have an extra ticket to put in the draw for our Nintendo Switches at the end of the summer program. That's so cool. I wish I was winning a Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Lite. Awesome stuff. What is the fastest animal on Earth? Not me, I can tell you that much. <laughs> All right, so we've got an answer here for cheetah. Cheetahs look very soft, don't they? Like, I mean, you wouldn't really want to get that close to them because they could probably just, like, rip your hand off. But they're so soft. They look so snuggly. They're fluffy tails. we got a cheetah or an ostrich. That's actually a good question. Ostriches can run really fast. Like, they have those long legs, and if you see them going, they are just booking it. They can't fly. They're too heavy, but they can book it across. I almost want to say, like, wild turkeys as well, because both on land and in the air, those babies can, like, travel, like, 30 kilometers an hour, and it's terrifying. I, I have a slight fear of uh, wild turkeys because they just have too many talents in too many areas, and that bothers me. All right, let's see. It is indeed the cheetah. So cheetah, spelled C-H-E-E-T-A-H, -E -E is your beanstack code. So cheetahs are the fastest mammals on Earth and can reach speeds up to 113 kilometers an hour. Cheetahs purr and meow just like house cats. See, it's that and the fuzziness, because look at how fuzzy they are. That would have me going up to them like, oh, kill the babies, but then like losing an eye or something, because it would be, you know, obviously that would happen. Ooh, somebody says here, if you count the peregrine falcon, if not, the cheetah. If you count flying, excuse me. I read that in my head, but it didn't go out loud. Yes, because I think they have been very fast. But did it say land mammal? No, it just said fastest animal on earth. Ooh. Because, yes, flying is a whole different ball game. So is swimming. Yeah, I don't know. That's a whole different ball game. But, yeah, peregrine falcons are gorgeous and speedy little things. All right, question 11. What do butterflies taste with? So what do these little beauties taste with? We're starting to see a few monarchs anyway um, floating around, a few other different types of butterflies. Soon we're going to get some cabbage butterflies. Those are like the little light-colored ones that sometimes you see. Apparently they like cabbages, hence the common name of like cabbage butterfly. I don't know if how I would feel being called a cabbage butterfly, but from a butterfly, I think I'm pretty beautiful, so... Looks so good. All right, we've got an answer here of tongues. Now there are there are plants that butterflies really enjoy, in particular visiting. So there are some that are like um, there are some that are like that are called like butterfly bushes. A lot of people will plant things, um, plant specific plants in an attempt to lure these beautiful little, I call them, they're little, like little fairies, bring them to your garden. So we have another answer of tongues and, oh, we had antennae, but nope, we've ixnayed that. It is feet, tasting with their feet. I think flies can taste with their feet, which is pretty weird. So do butterflies taste with their feet? They do! So butterflies taste with their feet. They can stand on the leaf and taste it to tell if, they ca if their caterpillars can eat it. Isn't that so sweet, though? It's like a taste tester. Yes, Sonny, you can have this. It's just cute. But unfortunately, they have a very short lifespan in general. Butterflies can only live for a few weeks. But they're almost 
20,000 species of butterfly. Like, how much beauty is that? And they come in all different shapes and sizes. And then there's the whole category of moths, which are different, but still beautiful, flying little creatures, little fairies. <laughs> all right, moving on to question number 12. What percentage of the world's animals are insects? So you got a, anywhere from one, or I guess less than one, to 100% of uh, the world's animals being insects. Well, it's not 100% because you and I, we certainly are not insects. I don't have no antenna. I only have four limbs. <laughs> so unless something happens to me and I'm somehow transformed into an insect, I, I am very much a human being. So you know it's not 100%. It's not zero percent. It could be zero point something percent, but I also think about earlier just how many different species there are of some of these different types of insects. Um, and that's like and then there could be theoretically millions in each of the species, which is just absolute nuts. All right, so you've got a ninety five percent and a twenty five percent. I actually don't know the answer to this. I have a guess, a loose guess in my head. And uh, I'll see. Oh, see. Colin says 45%. We've also got James coming in with 60%. All right, let's see which one. You're going to have your own competition at home. Whichever one of you is closer, you have bragging rights. You've got them bragging rights. All right, so let's see what the answer is. 80%. I'm going to have to give that to James. Congratulations, James, for the 80%. Um, for the 60%, rather. And actually, 95% wasn't too far off either. I was just saying between the siblings. No fighting, just bragging rights. So there's around 80% of all animals are insects. There are as many as 30 million species of insects on Earth. Like, 30 million. And there could be 30 million of each of those 30 million species, or even more than that. That's crazy. Like, that's just nuts. I can't even fathom that. Okay. Question 13. What are the three main parts of a tree? So I usually think of sort of dividing it into a cross section. You've got, uh, uh, and uh. <laughs> and here we've got some beautiful pictures of um, some trees looking up from the bottom and then looking out at a beautiful forest. I can't see the forest through the trees. Oh, then here's the joke. If a tree falls in a forest, and no one is there to hear it. Does it make a sound? Yes, it does. Of course it makes a sound. That's just my answer to the question. <laughs> of course it makes a sound. Something's got to be there to hear it, like a bug or a shrew or something. But I guess technically then the, the rhyme or whatever the joke says that nobody's there to hear it. But I thought they were always referring to humans. So, oh, excuse me. So we've got a couple answers here. Hmm of trunk, roots, and branches, root, trunk, and leaves, roots, trunk, and branches, and trunk, roots, and leaves. Let's take a peek here. So roots, stems, which I don't know, I guess technically, you know, if you had um, branches, I think that's pretty fair to, to uh, make a connection between stems and branches and leaves. I was thinking in terms of like understory, overstory, canopy, not, but that's usually associated with jungles, I think. It's probably somewhat the same for other forests. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. I don't know that for sure. All right. Question 14. What organism rarely dies of old age? That's a really good question. I don't know. Hmm. So this could be like an animal, a plant, a bug, a fungi maybe. Um, what else have we got? Something aquatic, something not aquatic. But we're getting pictures here of some leaves, which I'm thinking is a hint that potentially it is not a mammal or an amphibian or a reptile or a bird. What organism rarely dies of old age? This is kind of tricky. All right, so we've got a plant, leaves. Now, leaves are a part of a plant, but I'll give that to you. Um, bugs. Let's see. Trees. And the answer is trees. 
Which, you know, that makes sense because oftentimes if trees are so big, they might be growing in a really precarious place. So either someone's cutting them down because of that or they need the resources from the trees. Or, you know, wind will take them down. They're like, eh. There's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons outside of a tree's control um, that could potentially lead to its death. All right. Makes sense. And question 15. The leaf of what tree is on the flag of Canada? So what is that beautiful leaf that is the centerpiece of the Canadian flag? Which makes me just think of Canada Day, which makes me think of cupcakes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I do always have food on the brain. It's just, it's just who I am. So we've got some hints here of some beautiful, beautiful fall leaves, as well as a spring version of... Um, one of these types of leaves. We've got maple tree, maple leaf, red maple, and maple. There ain't no trick in any of you, although this is not a trick question. It's indeed the maple tree. So the flag of Canada has a maple leaf in the center, which are the leaves that grow on maple trees. And maple syrup comes from the sap produced from these trees. I believe you can get sap from pretty much any tree. I don't know how good it would be. Also, when it comes to maple syrup, you have to collect a lot of it because then you really, really, really boil it down until you get the higher concentration of the sweet, good stuff to put on your pancakes and your Monte Cristos and everything. All right. So it is time to find out who the lucky winner is of this week's $5 gift card to Tim Hortons. So I'm going to read off the names that I have here before spinning the wheel. And if you don't hear your name and you have been playing along, please comment your name below. So you have Cordelia, Wesley, Colin, James, and Ellen. So if you didn't hear your name, please let me know. I will add your name to the wheel before we spin it. Okay. Oh, we have got Zach playing. Awesome. All right, it is time for us to update and spin that wheel. So keep your fingers crossed. It could be you. All right. The wheel is spinning. And our lucky winner this week is Colin. Congratulations, Colin. You can stop by in the library to pick up your delicious prize of a $5 gift card to Timmy's next door. Oh, yeah. Very, very exciting stuff. And before everybody heads off for the day, we have some further learning here prepared by our lovely summer reading coordinators. So we have some cool YouTube playlists. There's a summer reading nature week videos YouTube. Um, you can also check out the book lists. We have book lists on our, uh, both through Beanstack, but you can place holds directly on things through the lists that are generated in BiblioCommons, which is our online catalog. And also we've got some cool movie recommendations here. A Bug's Life, which is on Disney+, Plus, which I referenced earlier. I love Bug's Life. The Jungle Book. Also, oh, it looks like, you know, all three of these are on Disney+. Plus. Also, I believe we should have DVD copies of these in the library that you could put on hold and we would get them for you. And Atlantis, The Lost Empire. All, you know, really awesome book books, pardon me. All really awesome films that are from totally different eras. <laughs> Very interesting in that respect. All right, everybody. Thank you for playing along. I'll leave that stuff up there a little bit longer. Thanks, everyone, for playing along. You've had a great time. I expect our girls will be back next week to have fun with some more fun, fun, fun trivia. So we're looking at elements next week. Elements in terms of weather, but also in terms of the periodic table. So that's a little bit of a taste. You'll get more of a taste on Friday, of course, when you have the sneak peek going on. Um, and yeah, thank you very much, everybody, for participating. Congratulations to Colin, our lucky winner this week. Oh, yes, you're very welcome and learned a lot. Hey, I learned a lot too. Here I went into it thinking, I was like, I'm going to know all these. I didn't. It's always great to learn something new. 
All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Tuesday and enjoy the rest of the summer reading program this week and for the rest of the summer as well. Toodles.